Hi, I would like to welcome you to MOCT training, Mr. Outreach Training Center. My name is Alan Brown. I will be your pastor and instructor for the next hour as we study the Holy Spirit. Let us go before the Father in prayer. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, giving you glory and praise and thanksgiving for the word going forward in power and might. All of you and none of me. Lord, you know what we need to hear. And for all is said and done, Father, we give you the glory, we give you the praise, and we give you the thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Now, it's, it's a, we've been teaching on the Holy Spirit. It's such a powerful subject. The Holy Spirit is awesome. It's, uh, he's, he's, the one, he's a helper in our lives. And last time we were talking about all some of the things he, he does. So I'm going to ask you now, who is the Holy Spirit? Now I'm glad you asked the question. The Holy Spirit is God. He is not an it. He is not a divine influence. He is not a, a white cloud. He's not a ghost or, or a concept. He is a person possessing a will, an intellect, and emotions. He is God with all the attributes of deity. He is the third person of the Trinity, co-equal with God the Father and God the Son. There is only one God, but he manifests himself in three persons, whom we call the Trinity. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, he is the power of God on the earth. When we receive Jesus as Savior, we are baptized into the body of Christ. God has given us a new heart and put a new spirit in us. And made by the word of God, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. And so he's made, he's been, we're made in the image and likeness of God. And then the Holy Spirit's job is to uh, produce those fruits in our life, the love and peace, and, and then change us into the image and likeness of God. The Holy Spirit comes to glorify Christ and to lead believers into all truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. On the eve of his crucifixion, while still in the upper room, the Lord Jesus said to the disciples, the counselor, that's one of the Holy Spirit names. The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. So that's one of the uh, jobs of the Holy Spirit. He will bring things to your memory, what Jesus said. The Holy Spirit came to enable you to know Christ through a new birth and to give you the power to live and share the abundant life which Christ Jesus promised to all who trust and believe in him, who trust and believe and obey him. The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. Let's turn to Matthew 3, uh, verse 16 and 17. As soon as Jesus, uh, 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 the son was baptized, he went up out of the water and at that moment heaven op opened up and he saw the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. He saw the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit is, uh, is in us at birth, in our new birth. And God has given us a way to not to be orphans. He said, I don't, want to, I don't want to leave you orphans or comfortless. I'm going to have some help down here for you and for me. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the, and the word God is Elohim. It is proof for God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. These three are one. They are called the Trinity. They are all God with three different personalities and purposes. The, the Holy Spirit is God's men earth to date. Whatever God says, the Holy Spirit carries it out. The Holy Spirit is a person with a personality. He's not an it. Something, sometimes people say, something told me. People have a real bad saying that. Oh, I was one of them. <laughs> something told me I shouldn't have went that way. Something told me I shouldn't have, I, I shouldn't have, uh, something told me. It's not a something, he is a he, he he's a person. And so, uh, uh, um, when, uh, when we speak about him, we, we, we say he, not it. When the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit, it uses a capital S. And when it talks about man's spirit, it uses a small s. So when you read the Bible and you see a capital S, that's the Holy Spirit. And the small s is our spirit or the spirit of man. Uh, God created man, uh, male, uh, male and female. God created man, male and female, and blessed and called them mankind in the day they were created. God said, let us, that us is God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit make man in our likeness. God is spirit, and, that, and, and that's what we are, a spirit that live in a body and that have a soul. Our soul is our mind, our will, and emotion. 
These three bear witness in heaven and on earth. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. The Holy Spirit will testify of Jesus. He doesn't testify of himself. Jesus testifies of God. He is the Spirit of Truth. He is our comforter. So the Holy Spirit has a lot, a lot of names. Jesus said, I, I will, when I leave, I will, not, I, I will send the helper. If I, he is our guide, he reveals God and his word to us. The person without the spirit does not receive the things that come from the spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. So that's why sometimes when you go around with your family and different people that's not in the kingdom of God, that hasn't received Jesus as Lord, they, they, they ask some silly questions. And when you give them the answer to the questions, they look at you real strange because they don't receive it. They can't receive it because a man without God is a beast. Alienate from the land of promise with no God and no hope in the world. So that person who's not saved and you're trying to teach them the word of God, it's like, hey, the lights are on and nobody's home because they don't hear you. They, gotta, can't, they can hear you what you're saying, but they don't understand what you're saying. What does the Holy Spirit do in our lives? Now, I want you to get a pencil and paper out because I'm going to give you the addresses and we're not going to turn to them so you can write them down. The Holy Spirit, what does the Holy Spirit do in our lives? Teaches and remind us of what we learn. In John 14, 26, he seeks to testify by Jesus rather than himself. John 15, 26, convict the world of, of sin, righteousness, and judgment. He doesn't have to convict us of, of sin. We are, we are, uh, Jesus already paid the penalty for our sin. John 16, 8 through 13, God is into all truth. Jesus, God is into all truth. Uh, that's John 16, 13. Glorify Christ. John 16, 14. Dwell within, uh, with every, uh, within every believer. Romans 8, 11. Reveal the, reveal the plan, God's plan for us. Romans 8, 14. Assure us that we are the children of God. That's in Romans 8, 15, 16. Do you know it's something, it's most a lot of it in Romans, a lot of it in John, right down the road. And it'd be a good, very good thing to do is read the, read the whole chapter of John 14 and start in, in reading Romans 8 all the way through because that's where a lot of this information is coming from. And then it then equipped us with spiritual gifts as 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and 12, 7 and 8. The power, especially for evangelism, Acts 1, 7 and 8. Intercede for us, Romans 8, 26 and also... And he seals our salvation in his Ephesians 1.13. So it's a lot. You know, the Holy Spirit does a lot. It says, what is the power of the Holy Spirit? Answer, the power of the Holy Spirit is the power of God. And we know the Holy Spirit is the, uh, the third person of the Trinity and has appeared through our scripture as, being, as a being through by which great works of power are made manifest. See, he was right there in the beginning, in Genesis 1. He, uh, 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 it was the power was first seen in the act of creation, for it was by the Holy Spirit the world came into being. In Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And the earth was formless and empty, and dark, darkness covered the deep waters. Water. The, whole, the Spirit of God was hovering over the earth. See, the Spirit, God said, and Holy Spirit carried out. God said that there be light. Bam! Holy Spirit carried He's like the action of God in earth. Holy Spirit moves. The Holy Spirit does. He's, he's, he's not just standing still. The Holy Spirit also empowered men in the Old Testament to, uh, to bring about God's will. You remember Samuel over in 1 Samuel 16, 13? He says, so Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brother. And from that day on, uh, on the, uh, that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came up on David in power. See, in those days, the Spirit of God didn't dwell within. See, the Spirit of God has, Holy Spirit has taken residence inside of us. He lives in us. But then, because the man's spirit, they was not saved. They were still, wasn't, they weren't born again. God, they had to come up on the men for uh, the works. Came up on Samuel. Came up on uh, different ones. Uh, 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 
Although the Spirit did not permanently indwell God's people in the Old Testament, He worked through men and gave them power to achieve things they would not have been able to do in their own strength. That's why Samuel, uh, Samuel did all these things. Uh, uh, all of Samuel's feet of strength are directly attributed to the Holy Spirit coming upon him. And that's in Judges um, uh, uh, 14.6. After his resurrection, before his ascending to heaven, Jesus promised the Spirit as a permanent guide, teacher, seal of salvation, and comforter for the believers. He has also promised that the Holy Spirit power would help them to spread the gospel. See, we need the power to spread the good news of the gospel around the world. The Holy Spirit strengthens you, bring your memory as you go and witness the people. As you go into the missions and, and the uh, youth camps and prisons and jail, next door neighbor, down the street, around the corner, doesn't matter. He's, you know, you, all of a sudden you, you get into the word of God and these scriptures start rolling. Now you got the addresses start popping up. And you be saying, whoa, look at this, look at this. And the Lord just moved because he knows who's going to be there in front of you. He knows who you're going to speak to. And he, know, he, exactly, he has exactly you know, uh, what to say to him. Because you don't know. You don't know what they've gone through. You don't know what they really need. But when you're speaking to these people that the, whole, that the Lord has put before you, there is wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit. There is insight. There's a lot of things. And if you don't, you have to really be mindful where it's coming from because you don't, let it, don't think it's coming from you. Don't get, it, don't get it twisted now. But the Holy Spirit will enlighten you. And when it's all over, you say, wow. That was awesome, Lord. I mean, you know, it not only blessed the person you're talking to, it blessed you because you, you can hear, faith come by hearing, by hearing the word of God. So you get encouraged as you witness. Witness has always been um, a, a time of uh, when I'm going through something, that phone rings off the chain, the doorbell rings. And I used to wonder why are these people calling me all the time? I mean, don't they know I'm going through stuff too? I'm, just, I'm saying it to myself. I'm saying it to the Lord too. He said, when I started, the Holy Spirit started ministering through me to the, to the, the different people. By the time I get through, well, I'm on fire. So this is the way he does with, see, he deals with each of his children different. God did with, you know, so I, I get, I go through and I, the phone will ring and boy, by the time I get the Lord get through with this one, that will ring again and this one. And boy, because I'm in the word. I'm in his presence. In his presence is, is peace. That's joy. And so, so, so he says, um, when you minister to the, uh, uh, the gospel around the world, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you, and you will be my witness in, in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Well, nowadays, you'll be a witness uh, whatever area you live in, wherever, every, whatever area God wants you to go to, you'll be a witness. And wherever you are, you're not only witness of what you say, you're witnessing to how you live. Your actions are witnesses. People are watching children of God. They're watching us everywhere we go. They're watching us. And we're peculiar people. Very peculiar people. And so they know, they already know something is, is, is peculiar about you. And they'll come to you in time of trouble because they've been watching you. The reason they come to you. Because <laughs> I was one of those people. I had my eyes on people who I used to run with and run bug wild with and they came into the Lord and all of a sudden I wasn't in the Lord and they was. And, I, I, and so in a time of trouble the Lord led me to them to give me some information to get my heart straight to get my walk straight and encourage me. So I'm telling you we're witnesses. We're witnesses and it's such an important part of our Christian walk to be a good witness. The salvation of our soul is a supernatural Work only made possible by the Holy Spirit power at work in the world. The only way we always say there's a supernatural uh, church, uh, we're doing supernatural things in a supernatural church. Yeah, we are supernatural beings. We are supernatural. So the whole, when the Holy Spirit is sending up on believers at Pentecost, so let's turn to Acts two, uh, verse one through four. When the Holy Spirit is sending up on the believers at Pentecost, it was not a quiet event but a powerful one. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the, the uh, blowing of a violent wind came 
from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separate and came to rest on each of them. And all of them was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them to do it. And all of them. And that was a, that when them, and it was it was awesome. Immediately afterward, the disciples spoke to the crowd gathered in Jerusalem and for the uh, the feast of Pentecost. These people came from different nations, different parts of the world, and therefore spoke many different languages. Imagine their surprise and wonder when the disciples spoke to, the, to them in their own tongue, and they knew they, they didn't even know that tongue. Can you imagine that? Clearly it was not something that disciples could have accomplished in their own, uh, their own strength, their own will, or own knowledge. It would take many, many months, even years, and a lifetime to learn somebody else's language with understanding. The Holy Spirit power was made manifest to a great number of people that day, resulting in the conversion of about 3,000 people came out of the kingdom of darkness and came in the kingdom of God. 3,000 people. Jesus, Jesus did, see with the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus as a dove, Jesus did a mighty, mighty, mighty works. And he told us, the works I do, you can do greater than these because I'm going back to my Father. You see, I knew some mighty works. He raised the dead. Oh, we, we, he raised the dead. He opened blind eyes. He, he grew limbs. He did wonderful work. But see, we're giving people uh, supernatural works. Giving people to translate out of, one, out of one kingdom of death, hell and the grave, into the kingdom of God for eternal life forever and ever and ever living with him. And that's the part we play in this whole thing, saving souls and ministering our gospel and going out of the world. And, 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 and that power of the Holy Spirit is in you and it equips you and enables you and empower you to do these things. To lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. These signs shall follow those who believe my name. They shall cast out demons. A lot of people don't believe that, that they can do that. They don't believe and they don't want to do it. But you're in a position to walk in this. We're in the position because we have the Holy Spirit. And he's not going nowhere. He's not going nowhere. He's, he's with us forever. It says, uh, um, Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast our demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom, of, the kingdom of God has come on you. That was Jesus. And after Jesus had descended to heaven, the Spirit also equipped the apostle to perform miracles. As, as he is, so are we in this world. We, we're supposed to be doing the same thing. We're supposed to lay hands. We're supposed to raise the dead. We're supposed to speak to the mountain. We're supposed to say all these wonderful things that were, uh, the, uh, the Word of God say we could do. We're supposed to do it. And that's when the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit will lay up on your heart in the middle of the night to call somebody at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Get out your bed and call somebody. And you don't even know what you're going to say. Do you hear me? You don't have a clue what you're gonna, what's going to come out your mouth. But see, the obedient one Go. Call. What? What am I going to say? I'm going to give you words. Don't worry about it. Just, just do it. Get you out of bed and, and go, uh, go uh, to the hospital. And they let you in like a, uh, 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 in, a, in intensive care. And they won't say a word. Just walk in. I'll be out your way in a minute. And let you in. Intensive care. <laughs> Don't have to show no papers. Just walk in. Who do you think? That's the Holy Spirit. Have you go in and lay hands on people and see the, and see the, the deliverance, see the healing power. That's all because of him. And he is awesome. In fact, um, let's turn to Acts 9, 4, 9 40. It says, Peter made everyone leave the room. He kneeled and prayed. Then he turned toward the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Tabitha opened her, her eyes and saw Peter and sat up. And Peter took her hand and helped her stand up. And he called the believers, especially the widows, uh, and presented Tabitha to them. She was dead, but now she's alive. Move. See, but you can't be in fear or to, 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 to do these things. Because the enemy will come in like a flood to try to get you to say, that oh, ain't going to work, don't do that. And the spirit of fear will come up on you. What well, supposed don't work. It is not on you. It's not on me. Obedience. He said, those who love me do what I, t do, do what I say. It's why you, why you say you love me and don't do what I say. So God wants us to be the obedient. Do what he says. 
The power of the Holy Spirit was manifest among all the believers of the early church through the dispensation of spiritual gifts, such as speaking in tongues, prophesying, teaching wisdom, and more. And all those who put their faith in Christ Jesus are immediately and permanently indwelled by the Holy Spirit. When you become saved, you are indwelled with the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to walk in the Spirit? What does it mean? People are well, you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The phrase means to live each moment dependent on the Holy Spirit, sensitive to His voice, and obedient to Him. When the Spirit speaks to your heart, obey immediately. And that's a growing experience. Because a lot of times I, He told me to do something, I ran. Because I didn't understand, and I, I, was, I was a baby. Oh, I'm a newborn. Right off the, I ran on the block. Right off the delivery table. I mean, I wasn't off the table. I was still on the table. <laughs> God, I don't care if you're a newborn. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes them babies, them babies don't have a whole lot of stuff to get rid of. Because sometimes them babies will do some stuff. God, don't 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 necessarily get, uh, uh, wait till you get a, a, a be an old child of God before you give you some instructions. They give you some instructions right away. It's up to us whether we're gonna obey or not. Uh, delay obedience is, is, a, is a form of disobedience. Sometimes it will become very clear why the Holy Spirit directs us one way or the other. And sometimes you just don't know. You may not never know why you do certain things. You don't know, you don't have the answer, but you just do it anyway. You say, you be going down the street. I'd rather be, my, listen to me, be in error than not obey. You know, in other words, my own spirit is saying do this. Sometimes I, I, I go down the street and drive and the Lord said, make a right right here. It's going away from my house. I live that way. Why do you want me to go this way? You can't reason it out. One time I was, he told me, he said, go down 54th Street. I don't like 54th Street. Too, many tr too much traffic. I don't want to go to, and I'm, 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 I'm saying this in my heart, but I'm really saying it to him. I don't want to go down 54th Street. He said, turn and go down 54th Street, and don't be a child of disobedience. I'm going, huh? I guess I make, I make, the, I make, the, I make the right turn, and I will go down the street, and with a great, huge, big fire, and I got a chance to pray. Of course, the Lord could have said pray right then. And I'd have prayed in the spirit. But see, he didn't say it like that. I could have went straight on where I was going. He could have said pray. But see, I can't say what he should have done. He said to me to go down this street. And, and I did. And I got an opportunity to uh, uh, pray for the people, the, the firemen, and a whole lot of other things that are going on in the spiritual realm. I prayed in the spirit and I prayed in the understanding also. And then I kept going. And one night, Years ago, Lord said, get up and close the front door. The Holy Spirit said, I said, that door is closed. I closed the door. He said, get up and close the door. And I just laid it, close the door. I, said, I jumped up. And just as I got ready to close the door, there was a, these, these, this gang of, of, of men was right in front of my, my door was not like open like this. It was open like this. Wide open. I don't know. The wind blew it. It wasn't locked. And you could see straight into my house. And I go, oh, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord. <laughs> Praise him. But... He, I mean, he, 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 he kind of, people say, he's always gentle. And he's always uh, real soft-spoken. But I don't know what kind of child I am. Because he's not always gentle. Oh, you know, he's a gentleman. He might be a gentleman, but he gets on me. You know, close the door. Um, however, the wise man or woman who obeyed the uh, Holy Spirit voice, he's a wise person. He knows all things, including the future. His guidance is always for our benefit. And so we got to really understand that he's for us and not against us. He's going to lead us in all truth. He's going to lead us in God's word. He's going to magnify and glorify Jesus. So we want to listen to the Holy Spirit. 
2 Corinthians uh, 10, 3 said, It is true that we live in the world, but do not fight from worldly motive. The weapons we use in our, our fight are not the world's weapon, but God's powerful weapons, which we use to destroy our strongholds. We strong, destroy false arguments. We pull down every proud obstacle that is raised against the knowledge of God and take every, every thought captive and make it obey Christ. So we're in a warfare. We, 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 it's a lot going on. In this, in this, when you, in the spirit, but the Holy Spirit will help equip you. Will equip you in that walk. He will equip you. And another version that's uh, two five uh, two ten five says, putting down Im- down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought into the beast of Christ. And after you have proven your complete loyalty, will be ready to punish an act of disloyalty. So God wants to be obedient because once you obey Him, you listen to His voice, you hearken to His voice, you'll be able to move. He said, "My my my, my sheep know my voice, and the stranger they would not answer, they would not hear." So God wants to be obe- getting a habit of obeying immediately without trying to reason with our own vain imagination. We try to try to reason it out. Like I don't think I have a, a nephew always um he tickles me, he says go to the he's a plumber and he goes and get the plumbing equipment and while he's in the store the Lord said get two of them. <laughs> what if he get two? Yeah, I don't need no two come on and he'll reason that right out. He get one. And he gets where halfway where he's gone to get a call. Or later that day, somebody need that very thing that the Holy Spirit said get two of. Because he already had use for one. But he, he had two. Had he listened, he wouldn't have to, he would have saved him some time, see. He said, I'm going to learn to do that. He said, I'll do it sometime. But he said, just get two. He reads it like, two, do you know how much two costs? <laughs> I don't need but one. I don't need no one in storage. The Holy Spirit knew he going to need two. That's why it's, it's for our benefit. Obedience is for our benefit. It says, uh, and so the Holy Spirit will equip us to live God in life if we focus on him. Romans 8, 5 says, For those who are uh, according to the f- flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. Believers, there are enemies in the earth, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And this, this is news. This is some good news to each, each and every one of us. One of us. The devil can't make God's children do anything. I want everybody to understand that. The devil can't make you do anything. What he does, he can influence you. He can tempt you with through the thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. He try to he try to manipulate you. All kind of ways to get you to do contrary to what God said. But he can't. The devil made me do it. That's a lie. Man, he, he, he didn't do that. He don't have that kind of power to make you. He can tempt us and he will certainly try to do so. But he can, we can resist disobedience by allowing the spirit power to work through us. Because we have the authority. We have power. All the, all the works of the enemy. He's given us power. Oh, it, uh, over in, uh, um, let's turn to Luke 10, 19, 10 17 through ni- uh, 19. While you turn to that, I'm going to read this. Jesus sent out the 70 disciples who later returned with joy, rejoicing they have authority over the demons realm in the name of Jesus. Jesus replied, I saw Satan falling from lightning from heaven. Uh, what did Jesus mean by this statement? As the 70 went from the village to village, Jesus was watching in another spectacle. He saw Satan defeated. Jesus saw the territory taken away from him. At the loss of territory and the subje- subjection of this demonic realm, Christ saw Satan fall like a bolt of lightning from heaven. Now you should be at uh, uh, Luke 10, 17. And the 70 return with joy. I'm going to read it in another version. Even that demons are subjected to you, uh, to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw, I, he even addressed them. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He said, I give you the authority and the power over the works of the devil. I give you the power and authority over all the works of the devil. All of it. And nothing by no means will hurt you. So we have the power and authority and the ability and the might to do what God told us to do. 
uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the root word for, uh, uh, for uh, from which power is uh, dunamis come uh, can uh, come can be defined as to have ability. It can also mean the ability to carry out something. In the classical period of the Greek language, dunamis means the ability to achieve in the area of physical, military, and political power. So we have the power. Uh, 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 the overwhelming proof of the power of God in the Old Testament was a miraculous delivered in Israel. Oh, you could see that power working. You could see, I mean, you could see all the different things that happened in, in the Old Testament. It was, it, was, it was on. The most powerful of all demonstration of the power of God is the creation of the world. You read the creation of the world, it's almost like you get to read the creation of the world and just start meditating on that. You can just see the Holy Spirit everywhere. Just woo. I mean, just all over the place doing things. I mean, everywhere there was something going on, the Holy Spirit was there. And you can see, he said, and that power, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Oh, ain't that an awesome statement? That same power. We have dunamis power. We have ability, power, and might to do the, do, do, do the greater, uh, greater works. To go into all the world. Jeremiah described this awesome power uh, to create. So Jeremiah uh, 27, 5. By my great power and strength, I create the world, human beings, and all the animals that live on earth. And I gave it to anyone I choose. Then Jeremiah 32, 17. It says, Lord, look, you made the heavens and the earth with your great power and your outstretched hand. Nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing. This is the kind of God we have. Nothing too difficult for him. But he wants to believe that. He wants to believe that uh, through, through Christ, uh, everything is possible. All things are possible to those who believe. All things. And so that power that, that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in us uh, uh, bodily is in us. And we have to rely on it. We have to speak things. We have to create, we have to create our boundaries. We've got to enlarge our boundaries. We, we got everything too tight, too close up. A little God, little bitty God. God said, no. I'm a powerful, mighty God. I want you to speak. So you can speak my words and live an overcoming victorious life. He wants he want us to live, Satan wants to live a defeated life, but God has promised us a, a, a life, and a life, that life more abundant. He wants us to have an abundant life. Satan wants to uh, take away our power in Christ. Well, how can he take it away? By manipulation, our thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. He wants to stop the authority we have. Uh, uh, his, his kingdom is at stake. Therefore, he uses methods or schemes to assault the believer, causing them to uh, uh, not to use the power we have in Christ. He wants to live a defeated existence, a defeated life. And a lot of times you can tell where people are in their walk by what comes out of their mouth. A lot of children of God are not living a victorious, overcoming life. They're living... Uh, 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 um, Less than life. They're living a, a poor mouth life. They got, they got, got everything. They own everything. Everything belongs to them. But they all, they, they like, like children. They don't. They just speak and they, they just uh, uh, satisfied with the lies of the, the, uh, of Satan. In fact, they're so satisfied with the lies, they begin to repeat the lies. I'm, I'm so sick. I'm this and I'm that. He said, "Here's the good news. The disciples of Jesus have the same." power of the spirit it is given to us to perform the mighty acts of the kingdom of God the spirit of God bring, uh, brings the power of Jesus to the church and Acts 1 8 said but you receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you and you will be witness in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth in Acts 2 4 the promise was fulfilled so we have the Holy Spirit all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues and the Spirit gave them ability that the rest of Acts is, uh, demonstrate the power of work, powerful works of the Holy Spirit through the disciples. So it's a good thing to go further in and read Acts uh, 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 4. And just read the whole chapter. James uh, 4, 7 says, Therefore, submit yourself to God. Re resist the devil and he will flee from you. And in 1 John 2.15, he said, Don't love the world and what it's offered. 
Those who love the world don't have the Father's love in them. Nothing, not everything that the world offers, offers physical gratification, greed, and extravagant lifestyle come from the Father. It comes from the world. And the world and its evil desires are passing away. But the person who does what, the, what God wants help them to do live forever. God wants us to be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He said, if you obey, if, you, if, if you're willing, I'll make you able. He said, if you, oh, God said, just willing. Willing, whatever. I made up my mind a few years back. I made up my mind that no matter what the Holy Spirit asked me to do, I would do it. And I, I made that commitment. And I asked the Holy Spirit to help me with that commitment. And I'm telling you some things that have been, been going down that the Holy Spirit had me to do that I wouldn't have never ventured out of and, and, and even thought about in my life to do. And I, I would have I ran. But He has strengthened me in my inner man. He has strengthened me to do. Because I want to obey. I want to do what, what's pleasing to Him. Not all because of love. Everything is because of love. Not that I love him, but he loves me. And he loves you. And I do it because of love. It's motivation is love. Our motivation of our heart should be because of he loves us. That's why I do it. I'm not going to do it because he's going to beat me down. He's going to beat me up. No, that's not it. Uh, the spiritual ba battle, we're in, a, we're in the warfare. We're in a, spiritual, in, a, in a battle. The spiritual battle takes place in, on two fronts. In our minds and in our behavior. The mind governs how we speak, act, and handle different situations. If we lose the battle on the front, on one front, we will also lose it on the other. Mm -mm -mm. Our actions, if we, and that's why in Romans 12.1 it's so important. It says, brothers and sisters, in view of all you have shared, just shared about God's compassion. I encourage you to offer your body a living sacrifice uh, dedicated to God and pleasing to Him. This kind of worship is appropriate for you. Don't become like the people of this world. Instead, change the way you think. Then you will always be able to determine what God really wants, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. He said, Renew, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can prove for yourself you can prove for who? For yourself. What is good and perfect will of God. God wants, that's why obedience, when we renew our mind, we have new ideas and new thoughts and, and, we, and our thoughts change our action to follow. So the thing about it is, if, if, if we listen to the Holy Spirit. He's the one that's teaching us. He's guiding us and he's leading us to all truth. He said, he, that's why the word of God said, if you continue in my word, you should know the truth. And that truth that you know will liberate you. Not the truth you heard on TV, not the truth that you heard on the radio, not the truth that your friends told you, but the truth that he tells you. His word is true. If you continue his word, you should know the truth. You should know the truth, the reality. And that reality will grow you up and mature you into mighty men and women of God. That truth. A lot of people got the, they, 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 a lot of people got their own truth. They got their truth, all kind of truth. Uh, you know, uh, my, uh, they be saying on some time, experience is the best teacher. Lie. That's not true. Oh, experience will cheat you. <laughs> it would, it would, it would eat your lunch and pop the bag in your face. Experience, but the best teacher is the Word of God. That's the teacher. So we must set our mind on obedience to God. Then we can win the battle against disobedience. The, uh, the Spirit will speak to you, to speak to our hearts, to warn us when we have stumbled, stumbled into something wrong. The Spirit will speak, to, the Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts. You've been in a situation where you, where you are getting ready to make a bad decision, a bad choice, and the Holy Spirit will pull you. If you listen to Him, don't sign them papers. Read. Or he'll illuminate. You'll be going over papers and, and people have a bad habit of signing documents, legal documents, and they'll they sign here, sign there, put the X right there, and they'll just go do 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 do. And you get ready to go do 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 do. And the Holy Spirit will illuminate something. Just when you get ready to put your little John Henry down your little. I didn't even, oh, what's that say? Everything has to be small print, but this print that you need to see be ooh, magnified. 
Oh, I can't sign that. That's the Holy Spirit. How are all the paper, the paper going to, the writing going to jump off the page? So God, God wants us to uh, rely on him and depend on him and know that he is here. We should obey God's word because we love him. It says, at that moment we choose, we choose to obey God. We choose, uh, uh, choose this day who you're going to serve. It's a daily exercise. See, making, choosing to obey God is a daily choice. I can't choose to obey God on Monday and then I'll fly with wrong decision Tuesday through Sunday. Every day I got to choose. We should read and obey God's way because it matures us. It, it actually will grow you up. Second Timothy 3.16 said, if you, want, uh, if you want to be more mature spouse, more mature parents, sons, daughters, employees, persons, then you will need the training of the Word of God and the grace it, it supplies to form you into a better version of yourself. In this way, you can also be a blessing to others through good works. The Word of God mature and equip us to bless others. And two, two, uh, 2 Timothy 3.17 says, says a, profitable teach, a profitable teaching for reproof, for, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God might be complete, equipped for every good work. Because God want to train us up. Be no more babies, no more, no, more, no more babies, no more children, no little kids. Making going around the same situation over and over again. Listen to the Holy Spirit. You won't be going around that mountain. Should we refer to the importance of being mentally prepared for, for battle? First Peter 1.13 says, prepare your mind for action. And Colossians 3.2 says, set your mind on the things above, not on the things which are on earth. Setting our minds on spiritual things must be done on a daily basis. Each, each day we wake up, we, should, uh, we surrender to God and ask Him to give us the strength and the guidance for that day. Every day, God give me the strength. Give me the, give me the wisdom for this day, Lord. You have been made wisdom. Lord, help me make the right decisions. I depend on you and rely on you, Lord. Help me walk this walk. Most of all, I've been asking the Holy Spirit lady to help me drive. <laughs> it don't have to be all huge, you know, big. I, God, help me drive, Lord. Help me obey the law. Help me see which way I should go. Help me be, 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 be in my car. <laughs> you know, I always say, I want to, be in, I want to stay in the car. Because then you can get so much going on. And your mind can be roaming around so much with things on your brain. You, know, you, know, you got so much on your plate thinking about it. And you don't be, help me stay in my car. That's what, that's what I say. Well, you, help me stay in my car. Because a lot of people are not in their car. They're at the grocery store. They're at the mall. They're at their sister house. And they be doing, and, and they doing all kind of stuff. So I asked the Holy Spirit to help me drive. Today, my son was working on his truck. Not too long ago. And some of you was working on the lights. Now you know I don't know. Well, you don't know. I don't tell you right now. I don't know anything about lights. I don't know no mechanical. <laughs> Zero. But, but he was trying to. He couldn't get the blinker to go. He couldn't get the thing to go to make the, uh, the, the blinker, the red, the, uh, the, uh, the brake lights wasn't working. So I was a tester. I was in there pushing the brakes. I said, Holy Spirit, help him to see. Help him. Because he knew it was a little simple, something really simple, but just couldn't get him. And I just asked the Holy Spirit to help him. And all of a sudden, help him see. And he, he, he got it. He, oh, that's what's wrong. I got, the, I got the things twisted. I got the things in the wrong place. So I the Holy Spirit to help him see. See, if he, the Word of God says he's our helper, our guide, our standby, well, I, I think I need to ask some questions sometime. Help. I, I asked him to help me make the right decision with making, making, uh, um, uh, uh, doing things in my house. Baby, help me, Lord, help me. And God said, uh, apart from him, we are inadequate to do anything of real value. With him, we can experience spiritual, spiritual victory. No matter how weak or important we feel, we can still help victory. It's not about us, it's about what God said. Galatians, uh, uh, Galatians 4, 
1 through 7 says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, does not differ at all from his slave, though he's master of all, but under guardian and stewardship until the time appointed by his father. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of this world. But when the, the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the, Holy, the Spirit of his Son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. He sent the Son forth, the Holy Spirit of his Son into your heart. So we have the power inside of us. He's transforming us into the image and likeness of God. And we therefore we must rely and depend on him and recognize he is. You want to live with real peace, contentment, and joy in your life? Do you want to have the power to overcome temptation and perverse and uh, uh, a calamity in your life? This kind of victory in living is found only through total submission and obedience to the Holy Spirit. Obey. Set your mind on things of God and trust in, trust the, the Holy Spirit to guide, enable, and empower you to obey His voice. I, Lord, help me. Help me every day. Holy Spirit, I want to be sensitive to His voice. I want to listen. And sometimes, some, sometimes now, even I listen to the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you, you, you go or He'll say something real quiet sometimes. I call it a fleeing thought. It's so quiet. And I'll say, okay. And sometime I'll go, well, I don't know what happened. I go, I don't, I'm not going to do that right now. Just like you need to uh, put something in your car. And he'll say, put it in the car. He'll remind you to put it in your car. But then you got 15 other things you want to do. And then you get where you're going and it's not in the car. So I'm learning how when he speak to me, just stop what I'm doing and go get it. I've been trying to get those new, we, 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 we have to uh, have our own bags now to go to the grocery store or they're going to charge you every time you put something in the bag. I have about a pile of bags sitting for me to put in the car. For three days, they're still sitting because every time I get ready to put them in the car, I, I, thought, I think about it and something else come up. He'll say, bags in the car. So I go to the grocery store, I say, the bags are still on the table again. How long with a bag still on that table? See, those are little things. And sometimes those little things cost you. It costs you. Uh, 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 what's that old saying that um, I used to say all the time, um, uh, procrastination costs? Sometimes procrastination costs you big time money, like a ticket, you forget to pay $400. You know, different, different things. So, because but the Holy Spirit is on his job. Because if you ever ask the Holy Spirit to remind you to do something, if you don't want to do it, don't ask him. Because he, sh he, will def you, he will definitely remind you. you do, uh, he'll pray, bring it to your memory. It says, uh, uh, Peter related how anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And Jesus went around doing good. And, and, and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. See, God is with us in everything we do. We, we are anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, going around doing good. And that's our job, go around and do good. And that was Acts 10, 38. The Spirit is here associated with the power by which God was with him, the power through which Jesus performed many miracles during his, his earthly physical ministry. The Holy Spirit is the very presence of God's power actively working in his children. The power of God actively working in his children. So, uh, so God has given us the Holy Spirit to help us, to lead us, to guide us, empower us, to be there for us. John 14, 26, it says, But the comfort which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things you remember whatsoever I have said unto you that's awesome to me what 
whatever Jesus has said, the Holy Spirit, he's going to bring it to our memory. But we have power over every, we have power to speak, we have the power to, uh, to take authority, bind and loose. We have authority, dunamis authority, dunamis of power. And ability and might to carry out the will of the, uh, the Father. And God wants to be willing. He wants to take the Holy Spirit and be willing to listen to Him and be a, and, and do do what He says. Jesus had this. Jesus uh, Jesus Christ had this spiritual understanding and abundance. As a Messiah, He was prophesied to have the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the and the, spirit, and the fear of the Lord. And Isaiah 11, 2 says, The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of, uh, of, of vice and power, the spirit of knowledge, and fear of the Lord. And so God, God has given us the spirit of wisdom. We have Jesus. And so other attributes of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift. And uh, 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 um, in Acts 10, 45, And they... Of the circumcised which believed was astonished, as many came with Peter, because that of, that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. In First Timothy four fourteen, he said, "Don't neglect the gift which we receive through prophecy, when the Spirit leaders place their hands on you to ordain or ordain you." The Spirit is not only the uh, the Spirit is not only the Spirit of God the Father, it's also the Spirit of Christ. So the Holy Spirit has so many attributes and so many names. Uh, um, he has, I'm, going, I'm trying to find the names because uh, uh, he's a comforter, uh, comforter, counselor, advocate. Not names and titles of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is known by many names and titles, most of which the no function or aspect of his ministry. So um, they have all these scriptures John 14, 16, 15, John 15, 26, 20, uh, um, John 16, 7. All three word, words are translated in the Greek. It's A P A R A K L O T O S. Can anybody pronounce that? P A R A K. Paracletus? Paracletus? Yeah, P A R A K L T E L T L E T O S. So, we're, so we, all this a comforter, counselor, advocate. But he promised to send the Spirit to comfort and counsel and guide those who belong to Christ. The Spirit also bear witness with our spirit that we belong to Him, therefore assure us of our salvation. He convicts the world of sin. He's a convictor. He deposits, seal the earnest. He's our down payment. We, are we going to be with the Father? He's our guide. He's our guide. Uh, in, in John 16, 13, just as the Spirit guides the writers of Scripture to record the truth, so does He promise to guide believers to know and understand the truth. So we are, we, we are guided to, un, 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 to know and understand the truth. See, we going we, 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 all of a sudden we going we, uh, He God and give us the insight. So the world think it's foolishness. God truth is foolishness to the world because it's spiritually discerned. Those who belong to Christ have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit who guides us into uh, uh, into all we need to know in regards to spiritual matters. When we need to know something in regard to spiritual matters, He's there, and if if He if He don't tell you. Himself, he'll send someone to tell you something you need to know. He'll send somebody to tell you. I remember the time that I, I got in. It sounds so minute, so small, but but it's not. I was having problems getting insurance, and I told him, the Lord, your gift is our repentance. They want to, they want to give me. I mean, the insurance was going to be ridiculous. This way, out the blue, call me. And told me, oh, I just called and said, how you doing? By the way, this place have a bit, this, this is a place that has some good insurance. It, it, it didn't even go together. How you doing? By the way, I want to talk about it. She, but she had some information that the Lord wanted to get to me. 
And when he got it to me, it was such a blessing because it was, I, I followed, once he gives you some information, it's up to you to follow through. And I followed through and it was awesome. See, and, and then she don't even know why she was, she, she called me to see how I was doing and then she told me about the insurance and she said, I'll talk to you later. And I said, this show was a strange conversation. It didn't even make sense. But then she had to get, she had some information that needed to get to me. And God used her to give it to me. And so therefore, uh, uh, I mean, he's, he's awesome like that. He's the indweller of the believer, intercessor. He's an, an intercessor, revealer, spirit of truth. Jesus promised after the resurrection, the Holy Spirit would come to guide you into all truth because of, because of the spirit, uh, spirit in our hearts. We are able to understand especially spirit and matter in a way that non-Christians cannot. In fact, the truth the Spirit revealed to us is foolishness to them and they cannot understand it. So don't get all tangled up with people who are not in the house of the Lord trying to, trying to, trying to uh, 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 explain spiritual truths to them because they don't understand it. Just tell them about how good God is, how much God loves them and what he paid the price for them. Because you're trying to, they want to answer all these deep questions, why this and why that. And when you get through with all your explanations and going through all the hoops, displaying all the stuff, they look at you like, duh. <laughs> they don't understand what you're saying. But you can tell them how much God loves them and how much you care for them and, and uh, uh, um, how, you know, they, 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 he, they're forgiven. And they, you know, it's just talk about the goodness of God. See, it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. So we can always tell them about the goodness of God. And he's also known as the name of the Spirit of God, the Lord Christ, the Spirit of life. In Romans 8, 2, it says the Spirit of life means the Holy Spirit is the one who produces or gives life. That he is initially, that, not that he initiates salvation, but rather that he imparts newness of life. When we receive eternal life through Christ, the Spirit provides the spiritual food. I like that. That is the substance of the spiritual life. Here again, we see the tri a triumph God at work. We are saved by the Father through the works of the Son, and that, that, and that salvation is sustained by the Holy Spirit. He gives us spiritual food. He empowers us and enables us, and He's steadily transforming us into the image and the likeness of God. He's producing, our, growing our fruits of our fruit of love and our peace, our joy, long suffering. And he is awesome. So you just continue being led by the Spirit of God. You continue listen to His small voice. Continue to be obedient. He said, "Those who love me do what I say." In Jesus' mighty name, amen.